Welcome. In this video, we're going to connect our very first digital stage box. These nifty devices replace the copper snakes we used to have to run from the stage all the way to front of house. And these contain a dedicated cable for each of our inputs. Now some awesome digital solutions exist, which are available such as AES50, which is included in the X32 and M32 consoles by Behringer and Midas to transfer digital audio between remote stage boxes. There are four boxes available for purchase from Behringer, and these are the SD8, which is this one, its big brother, the SD16, and these are both designed to sit on the deck of your stage. Then the S16 right here, and the S32 are designed as rack-mounted units. Now, both of these have their purpose, and both of these can technically be rack-mounted. Midas also makes the DL16 and DL32 that has Midas preamps. Finally, as an honorable mention, I often use my X32 rack as a digital stage box. The X32 rack is actually a fully standalone mixer, and it can be used as an upgrade from the X-Air series, as it can be integrated with other X32 series products. Basically, it has AES50, which is what we're talking about today. In the next video in this series, I'm going to look at how to utilize an X32 rack in your system. Here's a sneak peek. Having a dedicated X32 for in-ear monitors is great because it keeps the band off of the front of house console with their app to mix their ears. This is important because they can accidentally mix or adjust the main room mix while trying to mix their mix bus. The X32 rack is the perfect choice for most churches who don't have a monitor engineer because it goes into a rack and it stays out of everyone's way. I purchased the X32 rack first, and I do a lot of small events where I use the X32 rack and I mix it from an iPad. I later bought this X32 compact, and now for larger events, I connect it to my stage boxes and use this hardware console to mix from the front of house position. So here we are on the X32 Compact, and I'm going to assume that you have some rough understanding of how this console operates. On my website, crazyamazingdesigns.com, you can download my show file, which will give you my default routing and console layout. When diving into an X32 to play with stuff, to learn stuff, we always wanna make sure we save our scene by going to View, tab over one page to Scenes, find an open spot, and hit Save. Change the name, and then hit Save. Now, if you're saving a scene that's already been saved on, push save, save, and then it's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna overwrite the existing scene? Absolutely. Here I have my SD8, which has eight inputs and eight outputs. It also has a standard power connector and two ethernet ports for AS50A and AS50B. Then finally, a switch with three settings that allow us to make this the outputs on this box, outputs one through eight, output nine through 16, or out 17 to 24. So to connect this stage box to our console, I'm going to connect an ethernet cable from the AS50A port on my console to the AS50A port on the stage box. So I've got this blue cable here connected to the A port on the console, and now I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into the A port on my stage box. So now we have a connection. This connection is a two-way connection, sending and receiving audio, but when wiring the console to the boxes, I think it's valuable to think of this connection as a one direction output from the console. Anytime you connect a console to a stage box, the AS50A port on the stage box is always the input. Later, when we connect a second stage box, the A port on the new box, this one here, is going to be our input, and we're gonna connect it from the B port of the first box. So on the console, we can plug this stage box into either the A or the B port. The only difference is whether it shows up in the console as A or B. Whichever port we pick will obviously determine where we send audio to and where we receive audio from, from the AS50A or B port. Think of the stage box as a chain. The first stage box in the chain is always gonna receive the first eight inputs or 16 inputs if it's a 16 channel box. The second stage box gets the next eight or the next 16 inputs. So for me, I have this SD8 connected from AS50A port on the console to the A port on the SD8, and it's assigned inputs one through eight. Then the S16, which is connected second, the ethernet cable is plugged into the B port on the SD8 and then connected to the A port on the S16, which will connect to the next 16 inputs. If I change the cables here and I take my AS50A cable from my console and I plug it into the AS50A, let me move this and we turn this all around. If I plug this into the AS50A port 
on my second stage box. Then I connect my AS, my cable to my AS50A port on the SD8, which is the input, and then I connect it to the B port. Now we're good to go. Inputs one through eight and nine through 16 are gonna come from the S16 because it's the first box in the chain. And 17 to 24 comes from the SD8 because it's the second box in the chain. So if I had four of these SD8 boxes, the first one would be one through eight, the second one would be nine through 16, the third one would be 17 to 24, and the fourth one, 25 to 32. If this doesn't seem to be working, try some of these simple troubleshooting steps. When you have a device plugged into either the A or B AS50 ports on the X32 console, go ahead and push the routing button. And now tab all the way over to the very first, the input tab. Here you can see a graphical representation of the stage boxes connected to the console. And we can see here that my S16 is connected to the A port. Also at the top of the screen, we see another box where my S16 shows up as the device connected to the console. There's also a green square here, which gives me another indication that everything is working just fine. On the stage box itself, there's also a green LED right here that shows that there is a connection to something from the AS50A port on this stage box. On the S16, we can see the A and B links are lit up. If I unplug this second box, the B port will no longer have anything connected to it. And if I plug it back in, it's good to go. If you have multiple stage boxes connected through one AS50 port, you're gonna notice that it says one of two. For example, in the graphic here, I can see the S16 since it's the first device connected. If I go to the layers and I tab down, I can now see my second device is the SD8. In the first video in this series, we routed our first inputs and outputs from the local ports on this console. We talked in that video about the best way to set up inputs is by utilizing the users page. To do this, we push the routing button, then we then select the first tab, which is inputs, then we select user inputs one through eight and so on. Now arrow over to the last tab, the users tab. Here we select what inputs get assigned to each channel on the console. My microphone here is still plugged into input one on the console. Input one is still routed through the category local in and the signal input one. So if I talk into it, you can see here, gotta turn that down, always gotta turn this thing down, but you can see here that we still get signal. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move my mic from local input one on the console to input one on the SD8 stage box. I'm just gonna plug it in right here. The stage boxes are connected through the blue ethernet cable coming from AS50A on the console. And then we're gonna plug this into the AS50A port on the SD8. The stage box is powered on and based on the troubleshooting steps I see here, every indication says that we see the S88 over the AS50A connection. So now back into routing on the users tab with an input selected, I'm gonna highlight input one and then change the category from a local in to AS50A. And then I'm gonna make the input input one, which is AS50A one. So now when I talk in the microphone, I should be able to hear my connection testing. One, two, hey, I see signal, everything looks good. So now if I move the microphone from the SD8 input one connection to the S16 stage box input one, I don't get any more signal. <laughs> the reason for this is that the S16, which is the second stage box, isn't plugged in. Currently I have the blue ethernet cable plugged into the console port A and is then plugged into the SD8. To plug in this S16, I need to connect the B port on the SD8 to the A port on the S16. The S16 now becomes the second stage box in this chain, making its inputs 9 through 16 and 17 to 24. So back on the console, I'm gonna to continue to use channel one as my example, but I no longer receive signal, so I'm gonna to need to change my input and select AS50A input nine as my source. And as soon as I do that, I should Good signal, there we go. Can you hear me? This is great. So now if I unplug the ethernet cable from the SD8, which is coming from the console, and plug it into AS50A on the S16, and now I connect the B port on the S16 to the A port on the SD8, I have switched the stage boxes. So now take a second to guess what XLR port do I need to move the mic to so that I don't have to change any of my routing and the mic still comes through. Did you guess? Maybe you should pause the video and leave your guess in the comments. Okay? Three, two, one. 
So the S16 is now the primary stage box and the SD8 is plugged in second. This means the S16 is the first 16 inputs and the SD8 is the third set of inputs. So it's 17 to 24. This means I need to move the XLR mic to input nine on the S16 to get signal and keep our routing the same. So I'll just move this to input one through eight and nine. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Can you hear me? It works. So now we're gonna route the output so we can use the SD8 stage box to output our main left and right mix to speakers and subs connected to the stage box. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the XLR out cable from the back of my console to the SD8 stage box uh, out number eight. I'm also gonna change things up a bit. So I'll take the ethernet cable out of the S16 from the console AS50A port and put it directly into the SD8. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the S16 for a minute, and I'm just gonna get it out of here so that we don't confuse ourselves. There we go, move all this stuff around. Might as well plug this into input one. Okay, we look good. Now inside of the console routing page, we need to do some routing so that the SD8 receives the proper mix bus from the console over AS50A. Back in the routing menu, tab over to the AS50 a page. This is the tab where we select what 48 channels this console is going to send out over the AS50A port. Since AS50A is where our stage box is connected, this is the only one we're concerned about. But if we had another set of boxes or if our SD8 box were plugged into the B port on the console, we would do the same thing on that AS50B tab. Outputs are sort of like inputs, but at the same time, they're very different. Stage box XLR inputs are determined by how the wiring is done. The first stage box connected to the console is the first eight or 16 inputs, depending on how many ports the stage box has. Then the second box is the next group of eight or 16 inputs. Another difference between the inputs and outputs is that the SD8 and SD16 boxes have a switch and the S16 has a knob that allows the user to decide on each stage box which set of outputs it should be pushing to the XLR ports on the device. Users can select 1 through 8, 9 through 16, or 17 to 24 from each stage box in the form of this knob or this switch. So from the routing AS50A tab, the easiest way to get an output routed is to select out one through eight on the very first column. So the SD8, I'll change the switch on the side of it to out one through eight. Now with the XLR plugged into out eight, we should be getting signal if I go ahead and talk into our mic. Hello, hello. I gotta change the routing here back to AS50A one. Testing one, two. There was a camel when Christ was born. He lived in the stable right next door. You see Mary and Joseph, they had no hotel. They lived in a stable. Oh boy, did it smell. Hey, I remember the words. <laughs> I'm guessing none of you stopped while I was singing right there and typed into the comments, user outputs, Nathan. However, I'm guessing you have probably already predicted that that's gonna be my next move. I'm gonna change the first six columns on the AS50A tab outputs to be user outs. So I'll do user outs one through eight, nine through 16, all the way up to 48 outputs. Now, seven tabs over to the right, I'm gonna go to the users tab, and here we can push the first button to switch between our inputs and our outputs. And now when we assign outputs, these outputs we send over the AS50A out port to any receiving devices. So to set up our main left and right outputs, let's start by highlighting out eight in the second column. I'll select output as my category, and then I'll select out eight as my output. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and select the rest of the first eight outputs. I might as well continue and set these for all 16 of the user outputs. So we already talked about how the SD8 has a switch with three positions that lets the user decide which set of outputs to use that it's receiving from the console. So it's very straightforward. I'll switch out one through eight to out nine through 16, and well, now the audio has stopped. There's no more audio passing through. The output is now plugged into out 16, but I'm currently using Mixbus 13 through 16 on the console here as my effects. So in the users tab, I'm gonna go ahead and pick output one for my user out 16. Select user out 16 and then change it to output one. Now when we adjust Mixbus one, we can see that the audio is coming from Mixbus one. 
We've well established that the AS50A and B tabs are where we assign our outputs to be pushed from our console to stage boxes connected over the A and B outputs. On the AS50A tab, I changed the outputs to be user outputs, so starting with one through eight. You might remember that we already used the user out one through eight ports on the XLR tab when we assigned and we selected what signals would come from the physical XLR outputs on this console. So now whatever we assign to user out one through eight, we're also sending those same sets of signals out over AS50A one through eight. If we went over to the AS50B tab and we selected our outputs one through eight, we would basically clone the A outputs and get the same one through eight outputs in all three places. This would mean all three of these outputs would also have seven and eight as the main mix. So in video five of this series, I'm gonna go deeper into routing and show you some best practices for assigning different user outputs for these different destinations. So go ahead and click the card or click the link in the description to link to video five in this routing series. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna help you and your church get better at production. So please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video and turn on the bell to receive notifications about upcoming videos. Remember to get the X32 routing master file as well as look into my personalized training options at crazyamazingdesigns.com. I hope this video has helped you understand X32 routing just a little bit better. See you in the next one, have a great day. Bye guys.